Hey, Mom. Tell me you're watching this. I am. It's important that you're paying attention to what's going on, Kiri. I, I know, but... But what? I have ordered another 3,750 troops to our southern border to prepare for this tremendous onslaught. Did you hear what he just said? I, I did. And you don't have anything to say about that? I mean, it, it sucks, but... Okay, hold on. My rice is about to boil over. Get your rice. I'll talk to you later. Okay. Love you. Good night. Love you too, little girl. Night. <sighs> okay. No rice tonight. The cereal was good enough anyway. It felt a little too easy to hear myself when I was alone. And I would be, for a while. Graduation was three months away, so a new life was three months away. And until then, I had to put up with this one. It wasn't so bad, just lonely. I never made any true connections with all the fake, surface-level clones on my campus. And with the way the social climate was right now, it felt like I was living on the outside while everyone else was arguing on the inside of this big, opaque bubble. I just wanted to escape. This place was cliché. The big, Hello? echoey space, nobody there. Hello? But it wasn't a big, scary house or a spooky old forest. It was just a room, bright and completely white in color, with no distinction between the floors and... Uh! Well, yeah. Shows. What the heck? <laughs> Darling, you're legally blind in real life, but you don't have to be here. Who said... Where are you? I told you, silly. You can see here. Can't you? <sighs> and there she was. The surface that was once white had transformed into a foggy glass in desperate need of some Windex. And beyond it stood the most beautiful, adorable, majestic, pastel angel that I could ever imagine. I put my hand up to the glass to meet hers. Then I put it back down because she left me hanging. I'm dreaming. I'm dreaming. That's right. You've been trying to get here for a while, haven't you? Since freshman year of high school. Well, you did it. Don't you want to see what you've made? Oh, wait! D <sighs> okay. I can see. Let me see. Let me see. Um, show me light. Show me the, the way. Give me clarity. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> uh, c clarity? Clarity? Jesus. <laughs> clarity now. <laughs> the walls faded away in magical pixels, and then I really did have clarity. It was magnificent. A great, beautiful wood, everything entirely white, filled to the brim with fantasy and adventure. The trails were dusted with gold that seemed to blow with the breeze, and happiness seemed to be bursting from within. And if you looked up, 
through the branches, you could see that the sky was actually an ocean with thousands of colorful fish swimming through it and sunlight shining from no discernible direction. You made it. That makes me happy. <laughs> Don't freak out too much though. We wouldn't want you to wake up. This is impossible. This is impossible. This is Dremica. And it's all possible because of you. Okay. <laughs> and who are you? What's your name? Angel. And you are an angel. Yes. Well, I am extremely unoriginal. <laughs> Your Highness! Your Highness! Golly! Uh, what, is, what is... Hello? His name is Stereohead. He's of the Radiohead species. All of them have various audio players for heads, and body parts made of skeleton bones and scrap metals. This one is unfortunately cursed with a storm cloud that follows him wherever he goes. Poor thing. Your Highness! I'm so happy that I could find you! Is... is he... is he... Uh, sorry... Are you... talking... to me? Who else but you? The apprentice herself! You have to come quick! The witch is terrorizing the fairy village again! What? He is your squire. My... Okay... Uh... Well, uh... <laughs> stereo head, right? Youch! Okay... Um, well, just, what exactly were you talking about? So is this something that usually happens? Unfortunately, yeah. Uh, the witch is always trying to cause a stir in the fairies' innocent community. The fairies have been institutionally disadvantaged since all the other much larger species started making their homes in Dremica. They're simply so small that they're easily pushed to the side. It's sad, really. But we've done r really good with uh, making sure that they are disrespected now. Uh, ouch! Uh, but, uh, ooh, uh, the witch seems to always use her, her power to keep oh, uh, them beneath everyone. I... I don't know how I just made that. Oh, well, thank you, your highness. Uh, yeah. Take it, I guess. Uh, don't go anywhere without that. It looks like you kind of need it. You betcha! Now right this way, at the border between the light forest and the dark forest. <laughs> You're learning much faster than I expected. Learning. Right. Because I totally know how I just made that appear out of thin air. Stereo Head was right. Between the light forest, entirely colored white, and the dark forest, entirely colored black, there she was, the witch with a capital B. The fairy village was so, so small, just about three yards long on each side of the perimeter. And the fairies, they didn't exactly look like Tinkerbell. They were fuzzy creatures, all pastel in their various colors. They had six wings, two of which served as their arms, and their tiny feet came to little points. They all had four insect-like black eyes and pointy ears. And as for style, they all had their own cute hairdos. And the witch, well, she was nowhere near as cute. The witch was just a big, wobbly, black, jiggly ball of shadows. Literally. And somewhere out of that jiggly mess came arms, and she wore a big witch's hat to really sell the evil vibe. She had five glowing blue eyes and no other facial features. But she was only as intimidating as the Ice King from Adventure Time. Which, if you don't know, is not intimidating at all. Are you ready to burn, little one? Are you ready to feel the flames tear apart your putrid homes? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> what? Who the f*** are you? I'm the apprentice. And apparently, it's my job to protect innocent citizens of Dremica from creeps like you. So. If you want to try to start burning down their cute little village, then you'll have to go through me first. And you're going to fight me with an umbrella. What? What? No! This is a sword! Okay, shit, that's definitely an umbrella. Maybe you aren't learning as fast as I thought. 
Okay, whatever. I'm taking you down with this umbrella then. Hi there. Thank you so much for listening to this first episode of Dream Story. This pilot is so exciting for me and I'm so happy that you're here to listen to it. I have been dreaming up Dremica since July 11th, 2012. Yes, I have specific dates for it. So that means that there's so much lore, so many characters, and so many stories to tell. And I hope that you'll stick around and follow on whatever platform you're listening on for more majesty, love, adventure, sadness, happiness, and pretty much everything that Dremica has to offer coming up. Don't forget to share this podcast with others that you think might enjoy it and give it a like on whatever platform you're listening on. Thank you so much for listening again. And remember, keep dreaming.